All right, folks. So today we're taking a look at this tuner. It's an antenna tuner from Antuner the AT100M Pro. This is the latest version. I think it's the third iteration of this particular tuner, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyhow, one of the things I want to show you is that it has a battery in it that you charge via this USB-C cable. And then when you charge it, I'll roll a picture in right now, this is red and then it turns green once it's done. It has two ports in the back. One of them is out to your antenna and one is in from your radio. And then it also has this uh, little jack here for a key, like a CW key. So you can use this as a CW trainer in some capacity. Anyhow, I must have hit the button on the front, which changed this. But uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to the Nano VNA, and then we are going to test the input impedance of both of these ports. So let's go ahead and get started. I also wanted to quickly mention that I was contacted by the folks over at Banggood, and they asked if I wanted to do a review of this particular product, and of course I said yes. So they sent this tuner to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored YouTube content, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. Okay, we are going to test from 80 through 10 because that is what this tuner is rated for. And you can see we have a dummy load on the antenna output and then we have our tiny SA connected to its channel 0 or S11 port. It's going to shoot a signal out this cable into the input of the tuner and it's going to reflect back any SWR that we see. Let's take a look at Nano VNA Saver. Okay, we're connected up to Nano VNA Saver, and we ran a 101 point sweep with 10 segments. So that gives us 1,010 data points. Anyhow, if you take a look in the upper left hand corner, you can see we swept from 1.5 megahertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. And then over here on the table, you can see our results. And we're pretty low all the way across. Um, let me just go ahead and move marker number one. And so at the start of sweep, we're at 1.116. Uh, we dip down to our lowest SWR around here, which is 1.004. And then it starts to creep up. And at the end of the 10 meter band, we are at 1.28, which isn't bad. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to reverse the ports and then we're going to take another look. Okay, and what I should have mentioned is that we do have the tuner in bypass. All right, let's do the reverse sweep. I set the last sweep as a reference so we can compare the two, and they are pretty similar, a little lower down below 40 meters and a little higher above 40 through about 15. All right, on to the next. All right, so let's take a look at the interface, and as you can see, there's not much here. They have an on-off button, and then we have a single button here. And then it boots up, it tells us our firmware, some version information, and our battery charge, which is 100%. Here you can see an SWR and a power scale, and those will illuminate when you're transmitting. And then I think I can just switch through here, and then here you can get a data table for your forward, your reflected, and your SWR. That's the display that I think I like the best. Uh, this is another one that shows components as they are being used. So the top, I believe, is for capacitance, bottoms for inductance, and it will give you a reading as to what your settings are here. You can also go into manual mode with this tuner, but I don't think it's a very easy thing to do. Um, here is just an SWR screen. There is forward power. And then it actually has this Morse CW trainer, and that's a little bit weird. But let me see if I can hold this down. And that, I th believe, has entered. And it says, press the button to beep, exit, need, reboot. Press the button to beep. So you can do S you can do Morse code with this. That way. Which doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And then you can do it by connecting a key to this port on the back. And then once you've done that, you can bring your key over. And then you could do SW, or you can do uh, CW that way. Um, when you do this, it doesn't give you any kind of characters on the screen. Anyhow, let's go ahead and reboot to get out of this mode. I've never seen a tuner that does that. Anyhow, I can do a long press. And that takes me into the configuration menu. And this is going to be tough to read, so I'm going to actually look at the configuration settings on the manual. 
so this is the manual here. And um, if you take a look at the properties up here, it says it'll support any radio. So it's auto sensing. You don't need to connect a cable for this up to your uh, radio. What it'll do is it'll detect the frequency and then tune accordingly based off of SWR. And here it shows its power range. So you can see 1.8 or 1 to 18 megahertz. I'm sorry for a single sideband and CW. It's uh, 0 0.1 to 100 watts, peak of 150 watts. Uh, above 18 megahertz to 30 for SSB and CW, it's 1 to 50 watts. And then it says here 1 through 30 uh, for FM, AM, and FT8 is 50 watts. So I would really just suggest using this as 50 watts. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is using this with my um, IC705 and a little amplifier that I've got that does about 50 watts. I should be okay with that. Um, here's some other information about the battery and then shut down current, standby current, and some other information in here that you might want to look at. But here are the different settings that you have. This is the advanced function and the configuration. And you can pause this if you want to take a look at it. But just a couple of these things I want to look at is, is that you can set an auto tune to tune when the SWR is too high. And then you can set your tune auto SWR. The range is 1 to 2.5. Um, and then they give you a suggested of 1.8 to 20. I think I have mine set at 1.7. Uh, some tune delay is something you might want to take a look at. Um, let's see what we have down here. There's also this tune minimum ADC. And you might want to pay attention to this, but this starts a tuning voltage at a particular value. And it says QRP need attention. And so you're going to need to set this based off the amount of watts that you're going to be putting through here. It has something called fixed radio where you can set to 10 to 100 watts for your, your max power of your radio. I don't like the idea of having to change the setting if I switch around to different radios, but uh, maybe I'll just use it for my one radio. Um, you can change your cal you can calibrate your power or your SWR if it's uh, off. You can make it 60% to 150% of the reading. There is a number of average tests or samples that it would take in order to give you a uh, a value. And then you can actually come down here and test your relays or test um, your ADC, and then this would allow you to make sure everything's working okay. And then you can just reset every all system values. A little confusing, I know. So here's a sweep with the nano VNA from 6.5 megahertz to 30 megahertz. And it's of an antenna that I have out in the backyard that is Rybakov-esque. We call it the Kronos. And basically it's a four to one uh, voltage on on with a choke and then about a 25 foot vertical uh, element with uh, four 15 foot radials. And you can see looking at the chart that you need to use a tuner with this type of antenna. I have a marker. The red marker is set at 14.216 megahertz, but I just arbitrarily pick somewhere in the 20 meter band. And you can see that the SWR is 5.134. And then we're going to take a look over here at around 21 megahertz, which is probably uh, the highest mark of an amateur radio band. So like 21 250 uh, we're looking at 5.7 swr so those are going to be our two test cases so here we are on 20 meters and one of the first things i want to do is turn the amp off and put it in bypass mode and then we're at about 15 percent power level and you can see that the tuner tunes 20 meters with no problem let's just double check and then now let's turn on the amplifier and see what happens and I've got zero problems here, which is nice. Now this is the configuration that I typically would use if I was operating portable. Let's turn the amp off and then let's go to 15 meters or 21 megahertz. And you can see that it easily tunes that up, no problem. Now here's where it's gonna get a little bit goofy. Once I turn the preamp back on, I start to have a little bit of trouble here. And you saw that the tuner was able to tune the antenna. So I'm assuming the problem is a combination of this amp with this tuner on 15 meters. Now, if we turn the power down, we get a little bit of a different story. You can use the amp just fine, but once we start to turn that up, we start to get an SWR condition that causes everything to fail. I didn't see this on any of the other bands. So for example, let's take a quick look at 40 meters. And I want to make sure that my amp is in bypass mode so we can actually tune. 
and it, once again it tuned right up to about 1.15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the power down a little bit and then we're going to turn the preamp on and see what happens. And it works fine. No problem at all. So I think it has something to do with the combination of the amplifier and the tuner on 15 meters. So there'll be a link below where you can pick this up. I think it normally is about $90, but I think it's uh, on sale right now for about $75 with a code. And like I said, that'll all be down in the description below. And you can check it out if you want. Um, I like it, and it seems like it's going to work well for me for the 705. But I did have that one problem on the 15-meter band, so that's something to be mindful of. Anyhow, I want to say thank you to Banggood for sending this to me for my consideration, and thanks to everybody for watching. It's much appreciated. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.